Ducati. So we've got 18 cars on the grid now. It's a massive, massive Alfa Tauri sandwich, in fact. And we will go on, um, we will now wait for the five red lights to come on. We have one red light, two, three, four, and now five red lights here. And the race is now underway. SLR Quattro leads us away. He seems to get a decent start. Yeah, he does get a decent start, but behind him is three wide. Matsuo gets an excellent start. Matsuo is up to P2 from P4. God, Negba down to P3 and Jack down to P4. What a start for Matt Silva. Unbelievable start there. Great launch. Meanwhile, see a few cars going side by side behind. Zaka's Beast is pushed wide by the car who's going side by side with him. I'm not sure who it was. We've got a spin as well. We've got um, a crash there. And that is OG James with front wing damage. And Charlie, who also has front wing damage, I believe. But so as all that is happening, um, Quattro has already bolted, he's already got a gap of 1.3 seconds to P2, who is Matt Silver, God Negba in P3, Zach is Beast is also up to P4, so Zach, so Jack is up from uh, P2 down to P, from, um, down from P2 to P5 already, after just one sector in this race. Um, we've also got side-by-side -side action right here in front of us, between um, Zach is Beast and SLR Jack. So Jack is going back out Beast, and they're going side by side into the third sector. Zach Beast just about holds him on the outside, keeps him within track limits. Zach Beast shows him all of the respect he deserves. Just about gives him the place. And that is really amazing. And now we've got the half behind of Dossa going for a move on Zach Beast. Can he get a run? Can he get a move into the last corner? He takes the outside line, tightens the corner though, and gets a better exit towards the start finish line than Zach Beast. And he's going to have a really, really good run here into the first corner, but no, he's not using the other S. Well, now he is actually. And can he maybe dive into turn one? As we've also got Jack just behind the two of them. Dossa just thinks better of it. Jack doesn't go for the move either, but we've got Vaseline behind as well. We've got Charlie going for the move. We've also got uh, that guy in the pit for front wing change, I'm assuming. Yeah, for front wing change. We've got several cars in the pits, actually. We've got side by side action right in front as well. We've got South Cup to go side by um, Vaseline with TTM 10. Go through the first sector. If you go side by side through the first sector, you'll just lose so, so much time. It's honestly not worth battling there. It's better, you're better off just holding behind the car in front and waiting for, for a DRS there because the slick is so, so powerful here along with the DRS. We've also got Golden Egg Fire, as you can see up front, right up the back of uh, Matt Silver. But, but, the South Africa has got a good run on the TTM test and he's looking very, very lazy here. TTM test misses the apex. Uh, South Africa gets a better run than him. And South Africa is all over the back of TTM Tess's gearbox here. He's surely going to go for a move soon, but I don't think he'll go for one into the chicane, or will he? He's got a run here. He's been really, really brave for going for a move here. As we've got yellow flags, there's a Mercedes off. The Mercedes of Belanger, who's had a spin. And does he have far wing damage? He hits the wall as he spins back into the right direction. But we've also got, um, we've got loads, we've got overtaking here as well. South Africa's finally passed TTM Tess. And Quattro sets the fastest lap of the race. He's already bolted. He's got a gap of 2.6 seconds for the cars in front. But will TTM Tess go for the move back on South Raptor? He's got, he's got his DRS on. He's got the slip to him. He takes the outside line. Was he going to send it? He does send it. He, he locks up just about sticks it. Makes contact with South Raptor. Gives him absolutely no room on the inside of the corner. But just about gets away without a spin there. That was very, very close to comfort there. We've got Charlie right on the back of him. Charlie makes contact with the back of TTM Tez. TTM Tez has now been overtaken by Charlie. And I think there's a little bit of lag there as well. I'm not entirely sure what happened, but God, Negba is all over the back now of Matt Silver as well. The gap was down to just a tenth of a second just a moment ago. It's now back up to four and a half tenths. Kickle is also right on the back of TTM Tez as well. So does TTM Tez have damage? Does he, does he have some sort of problem? He's lost a lot of time here. Kickle sends one round the other side on the soft tyres compared to the medium tyres of TTM Tez. Um, and Hicklin gets the move done, so that's a wonderful move there from Hicklin. However, TTM Tess is coming back home, and we send him to the chicane. No, he doesn't. He thinks better of it, but Hicklin misses the inside there, misses the apex. But he's gone away with it, and he's just got a bit of a gap now, a bit of breathing room for TTM Tess. We've got Alper right now. Oh, sorry, we've got um, Simon going alongside SLR Jack right now as we come through to the last corner. We've also got Dosta battling with Alper right ahead, but Simon sends it round the outside. Gives up the position but gets a better run through the last corner. He's going to be right on the back of Jack now. He's once again side by side with him. He's got DRS, he's got DRS as well. 
is going to be a drag race up until the first corner. And who's going to blink later? Who's, sorry, who's going to blink first? Simon goes for the absolute dive into turn one and gets the move done. That's a brilliant move. And Jack is forces ducking behind. So after starting in P2, Jack is down now down to P8. So his race, day, race pace does not seem to be as good as his qualifying pace so far. And we've also got Simon following right on the back of Dossa. Dossa doesn't get the best run through Sector 1. Simon's going to have a really, really good run here. And he goes side by side, opening the DRS, using ERS, and he's already ahead before the, before the long left hander at the start of Sector 2. As CTM Tez picks up a penalty uh, for, um, for track limit. We've got a great three-way scrap here for P6 between Simon, Dossa and Jack. And that Jack is going to have DRS here. He's going to have DRS. He's going to use his DRS as well. He's going to go for a move, it seems. Yeah, he is. He's going to go for the move before the last corner, which can actually be counterproductive because if you ever take before the last corner, the car behind you has DRS, so he can get you back into turn one at the start of the next lap. He goes for a move on the left, though. Now Dossa's going to be all, all over the back of him. He's now using ERS. He opens the, the DRS as well. But no, Dossa actually goes into the pit. That's a very, very early pit from him. And that releases Jack to go back after Simon, who overtook him just a few laps ago. Meanwhile, the gap between Quattro and Matt Silver just keeps on going. It's now up to four and a half seconds. Golden Eggfire is all over the back of Matt Silver, though. Zach is beast in P4, so Red Bull looking good here to win the, champ the Constructors' Championship so far. But obviously, this is still a long race. Still 20 laps to go. Anything could happen. As we see an overtake at the bottom, that is for that guy pissing, apologies for that. But we've got God Neck by trailing Matt Silver, we've also got Alpen right up on the back of Zach's feet. So we may well see a couple more overtakes in just a, mo in just a moment's time. As I've just noticed as well that Belangi has gone into the, has retired from the race, so I must have missed that. He obviously had a spin earlier as well, which was just about caught, but now he's not even in the race anymore, so it just goes from it's not been a good weekend for him at all, unfortunately. But we've got Alper really, really looking for a move here on Zach's beast. He, was, he gained a lot there uh, into the last corner, and he's now going to have DRS again and DRS, but he's not actually using DRS, he's not going to go for a move this lap, he may well go for a move very, very soon, we'll have to start of the next lap though. As Zachary's Beast is also gaining up, to, uh, closing up to the back of Golden Eggfire and Matt Silver in front of him. So this is now slowly turning into a four-way battle for P2 now. This will get very spicy very, very quickly. And we've got TTM Ted in the pits now. A very, very early pit, so bear in mind he's on the medium tires. We've got Zach and Beast going for a move though in front. He's going round the outside of Golden Eggfire. Golden Eggfire makes contact with him. He's still on the outside though. This is going to be side by side going to the chicane. And who's going to blink first hit? It's going to be a really, really brave move for whoever goes for it. Golden Eggfire takes the racing line. Zach is forced to back out of it. Golden Eggfire goes a little bit wide. Zach is just about squeezed between the wall and Golden Eggfire. And that is a brilliant, brilliant move from him. Millimeters either side between the between the right-hand tyres of, of Golden Eggfire and the wall on the right-hand side. And that is so brave, absolutely brilliant from Zach's beast. What a move that is. As we see someone retiring in the pit, that is OG Jane. But what a move there from Zach's beast. That was brave and that was brilliant from him. We've also got Alpe gaining quickly here on the back, onto the back of Golden Eggfire. He's going to go for the move around the outside. Clips the wall actually on the entry to the corner. Tangs behind him. He's going to have a good run here. Golden Eggfire could also have a good run on... Um, to get back past Zach's Beast. I think Golden Eggfire will be forced to use the DRF here to defend from Alpha, but also to make a move on Zach's Beast. Golden Eggfire is going to go for the move. He's going to go to the outside, clips the wall on the straight. He goes round the outside, locks up. He has the inside line up for, P for the second corner, but Zach's Beast stays ahead. He's now side by side with Alpha. Alpha is forced to back out of here. And meanwhile, while all of this has been happening, 
Matt Silver just about managed to get a nice uh, a nice gap now um, ahead of, of this battle for P3 now. So he's now got a 1.5 second gap to Golden Eggbar. But Golden Eggbar going very slowly actually, very, very slowly. Alpha's going to have a run on him now. Alpha gets past him into, into the start of Sector 2. I wonder if Golden Eggbar maybe has some sort of damage. He's going very slowly, very, very slowly. I think he might have damage. We've also got Simon overtaking him as well. And there's contact between the two of them. Simon makes contact with the right hand tire of God and Eggbar and then makes contact with the wall on the left as well in quick succession. But God and Eggbar is going back to the move down the inside of God and Eggbar into the far chicane. He just about backs out of it. Simon goes wide though and God and Eggbar is going to have a really, really good run here now as they come through to the last corner. He opens the other and gets a load of slip here. The slip is so, so powerful on this track. And he sends it round the outside, breaks very, very late, locks up a little bit on the inside left, but holds it round the outside, and will he have CRF? No, Simon has a CRF, so Simon, Simon is actually going to hit that release of God and Eggfire, so I assume that God and Eggfire doesn't have damage because he's, he's stayed out, um, he still hasn't hit. We see behind, um, South Raptor is gaining um, up to the back of, um, of Charlie right now. They are the two lead medium runners, so they are both in, in a quite a strong position right now to gain on those who start in the soft at the end of the race. As we've got Simon, um, uh, yeah, uh, as I said that earlier, sorry, Simon in the pitch as well. As Dosser picks up a 10 second penalty uh, for exceeding track limits. I wonder what happened there. That's a very, very strange one. You don't see those very often. But anyway, I think Charlie... Um, oh no, sorry, apologies, I'm getting confused. My head's absolutely gone. Uh, but we've got um, Jack closing up to the wheel of God and Eggfire. So as I said earlier, God and Eggfire losing a lot of time here. Losing time hand over fist. And he's definitely not having the best race pace here out of all of the cars. Bearing in mind where, where he was earlier. As we've got an overtake. Down the bottom, Dosso has retired from the session as well. And we've got a virtual safety car, so this is going to neutralise the race and also give me a chance to rest my voice because I've been talking for so long. There's been so much action to cover here and so I definitely need a little bit of a breather here. But you can just see the dominance as well of SLR Quattro. Up in P1 and with a huge, huge gap to the cars behind him, he pits. He takes advantage of the fact that there's a virtual safety car to get a cheap pit stop. But before he pit, the gap between him and P2 was was I think eight seconds, so he was just cruising away. Getting in a, he got an eight second gap after nine laps, so he's gaining almost a second a lap on the cars behind him, and Quattro just looks so comfortable and so dominant here. And that virtual safety car has now turned into a full safety car, so SLR Quattro rejoins in first place, all of the cars behind him also pit. However, that, that has just wiped out the gap that Quattro had to the cars behind him. As we see the beautiful Aston Martin safety car, up in front of Quattro right now. Yeah, so this has now neutralised the whole race and it will be very, very important for Quattro to, to get a good restart here. There's, there's going to be no more pit stops as, as long as everything goes right for the top few drivers. It's going to be really, really important for, get, for Quattro to get a good um, restart here to try and rebuild the gap that he built um, at the start of this race. Golden Ekbar has interestingly got, interestingly got onto the hard compound, onto the hard tyre compound. So he, he's the one of only two drivers, the other one being Hicklin who's running the hard tyres in this race. Everyone else is on mediums or softs. And the hard tyre is not a very, very, obviously it's very, very durable, but it's not the best race tyre um, for this track. So they may well have pace at the start, um, at the end of the, of, the, of the race, but at the start they may well struggle quite a lot. As you see Hicklin just closing up to the pack here, along with that guy, QBRJ, Leah and Andrew Hill also all closing up to the pack right now.
as we're seeing a lot of love for Hicklin in the chat right now. As I didn't mention it earlier actually, but Golden Eggfire did actually tell me that there is a 22% chance of rain in this race. So that is definitely something that could throw a little bit of a spanner in the works if that does in fact come. Obviously Saudi Arabia is in a country that, that sees um, rain very often, so that would be quite a surprise. But there is a chance of it and it could well happen. Yeah, we see all the cars here warming up their tyres and preparing for the, for the safety car V-Star, which I assume will be at the end of this lap because the last car on track right now, that guy has just caught up to the rest of the field. So the safety car should uh, go back into the pit at the end of this lap to restart this race. fantastic under the lights here at this track. It really, really is just so, so good. It just looks amazing, it really does. And yes, the safety car is in at the end of this lap. So SLR Quattro becomes a de facto safety car now. He will, he is in charge of when the whole grid bolts. see him weaving very very aggressively now just definitely trying to get a little bit of extra tire temperature before the start of, uh, before the restart for this race that safety car period was actually very very well timed for those in the soft tires as well because it um, it gave them a free pit stop and also helped them to uh, to save their, their medium tires a little bit longer but SLR Quattro has gone the race is now back underway Will there be any cars going for a move? I think there's a little bit of action going on behind. Yes, there is. There is the Williams and the Haas car of Leo and Golden Eggfire going side by side. Golden Eggfire is now ahead of SLR Leo. I, don't, I think um, Golden Eggfire was actually ahead of him anyways. But Golden Eggfire holds on to the position on the medium tyres compared to Leo on the soft. Um, SLR Leo, the only car right now on the soft tyres, interestingly. He'll definitely have to make another pit stop as he also goes wide behind, I think. And God Necro also makes a little bit of a mistake, so Leo's going to have another run back on, back on God Necro here as it comes through to start the second sector. God Necro just about coming in, but God Necro also goes for an absolute lunge on Hicklin. I don't know if Hicklin maybe has damage or something, but he's just let two of the cars pass behind him. GLC Andrews also run on the back of him, and Zach and Beast picked up a penalty, so that could well cost him in a battle for, for the podium here. Alpe is another car who also has a penalty. Uh, who also has a, um, a penalty as Simon gets past Raptor. And we also see Charlie right up on the back of SLR Jack right now. SLR Jack also has a good run on his teammate, South Raptor. And actually, Jack's going to go on the move from South Raptor. We're going to see it from the point of view of SLR Charlie here. Jack lunges it down the inside, gets the move done, and Jack also gets the move done on South Raptor. So Raptor loses two positions here in one corner. And now Charlie's going to have a run on Jack. Is he going to steam it around the outside after turn one? He thinks about it. Turns down really, really tight. Gets a good run through turn two. And that's a really, that's really close race between these two drivers right now. It's so, so close between them. They're going to go side by side once again into the, into the S section. But uh, Charlie's forced to give up the position to Jack. But that was so close. There was, you could fit a piece of paper between the two cars. And that was so close between them. And that's a lot heckling picks up a penalty now for track limits as well and South Raptor's in the pit interestingly enough he must have got damaged maybe um, from hitting the I think he might have hit the wall at the last corner as he was battling SLR Jack his teammate we've also got um, God and Eggfire battling QBRJ right now he's really really close to the back of him and I've got an Eggfire who has lost a lot of ground in this race 
in, in the first in now has all of the time to make up. Ski by Jay picks up a penalty. We just saw that right in front, right in front of us. He exceeds track limits and picks up a penalty. And QBRJ makes a mistake there. Oh, cuts right across the front of God and Eggfire. They're just as he was about to go for the move down the inside. That was a little bit naughty there. A little bit naughty from QBRJ. But just about gets away with it. And DRS has now enabled this lap. But God and Eggfire is going to have a really, really good run here. Obviously, um, Eggfire won't have, uh, won't have DRS on this lap yet. But he will have it at the next deal of S detection point. And he sends it round. There's like this concert between him and, and QBRJ. And there's more concert. There's definitely damage for Cardo. It's also definitely coming up. And I think that might be to God Nekfire as SLR Leah goes round the outside of, of God Nekfire at turn two. Obviously, God Nekfire was not expecting it. And you can just see the chronic understeer that God Nekfire now has. He's going to have to pick for a front wing change. And that is absolutely devastating for him. That is such a shame for him. As he was looking to make a move on one car, but now he's lost his front wing and he's, got, he's being overtaken by everyone else. As you see, SLR Lea also getting past QBRJ as well right now. So it's all kicking off right now. As we, ju as we just passed the halfway point in this race, Alpha picks up another 3 second time penalty. So I think he's now up to 6 seconds. Tell you what, I'll just check now. Uh, Alpha's actually on 8 seconds of penalty. I wonder how he's got... Oh no, sorry, 5 seconds and 3 seconds, that makes more sense. Um, but yeah, so Alpha is now on 8 seconds of penalty, so even though he's in P4 right now, he will definitely lose a few, uh, a few places at come the end of the race if it stays like this. As you see QBRJ going wide on the chicane, but... Yeah, Zach is beating one car that has, um, that has a penalty. Alpha has 8 seconds, Simon also has 3 seconds. Zach has been holding on fairly well to the, to the back of SLR Quattro though. SLR Quattro is not pulling away in the same way he did in the first stint. So this could well be a little bit closer than we expected right now. As you see, um, Charlie game past uh, Jack into turn one. And we see that guy also making a move. Oh no, not making a move. That's because Leah's in the pit. But Jack is still right on the back of Charlie. And just like I say that, Jack actually picks up a penalty. He gets his first penalty of the base and seeing track limits. We saw that quite clearly there as he came out of sector one. And Jack is using the, um, ERS, definitely trying to close up a little bit for Charlie. He's still going to be within DRS stands right now as he comes to the next DRS, uh, DRS zone. But Charlie seems to have some decent pace. He seems to have more pace than Jack right now, so he'll just be praying they can cling on to DRS right now and stay with him. But meanwhile, we've got Alpha closing up to the back of Matt Silver. And will Alpha go for moving to turn one? He's going to have ERS, he's going to have DRS as well. Matt, uh, Matt does not have any form of DRS, so this is going to have a really, really... You can see the straight line difference between the two of them. Alpha goes right round the outside and actually takes the racing line even. He's ahead of him before the apex. And Alpha is up into the podium pace, but with eight seconds of penalties, that won't stay that way for long, I don't think. We've also got GRT Andrew uh, right up the back of QBRJ, actually nearly clipping the veil of him through turn two. And this battle is going to continue on as well as they come through the S section. The dirty half of the car, but the car following behind through the S section is so, so tough. And you can just see it there as well. You can just see that he doesn't quite have the same turning as QBRJ in front of him. But he still manages to hold on close enough. And he's now got DRS to help him get a little bit closer again uh, to the car in front of him. As that guy picks up a penalty. He's now actually got 12 seconds of penalty. And QBRJ! Gets a massive snap of oversteer that just about keeps the car in a straight line at the start of sector 2 here, but that was so so close to him just absolutely slamming it into the wall. He's very very lucky to still be in this race and not have any sort of front wing damage. But also that gives Andrew such a good run on him. He's surely going to have to uh, gonna make a move soon, especially after that mistake for Jay. 
I think um, I think Andrew will be sensing blood here. But actually Jay gets a decent run through that chicane. And he's still got DRS though. He's got ERS as well, which is not actually usable, but he's got the slip to his own. You can just see how much he's gaining as he comes through to the last corner. Is it gonna send it? Goes to the inside, he does send it. I don't need to cough. <coughs> Apologies for that, but it's still side by side. <laughs> oh my god. I I my my throat is really, really itchy right now. <coughs> <coughs> Apologies for that, but you can see Andrew going round the outside of QBRJ. He gets the move done as well. That is a beautiful move from him. That's a really, really great move. And really committed. Gets the inside line to turn two and just makes it stick. Great stuff from him. And, well, we can see a little bit of a blatant corner cut there from QBRJ. He's definitely picked up a warning for that one. He actually clips the middle of GRT Andrew at the end of sector one. He's going to have DRS here, he's using ERS as well, he's definitely trying to get back past him. Um, he goes to the inside into, at the start of Sector 2. Do you, do you see Andrew's view overtaken by QBRJ there, but we also saw a fairly clear corner cut there by QBRJ. Which definitely gave him the run in order for him to get back past him. Andrew gets a better run for him through the, se uh, than him through the second sector there, and this battle is going to continue on and on and on. They're coming up to the fast left right chicane here again. They're not going to go side by side into there. That would be an absolute death wish, I think, because it's so fast that any form of contact could easily send you into a wall or into a spin. However, DRS is back open now for GRT Andrew as he comes through to the last corner. He's got a really, really good run here. QBRJ has very little ERS. You can see that by his red light flashing at the back of his car. Andrew goes to the move, takes the inside line. Q QBRJ is now back behind GRT Andrew. And you can just see, he's only got about 6% ERS now, uh, does QBRJ. But he's still going to go for the move anyway. He goes round the outside, down to 1% ERS, literally has none left. But he still manages to get past GRT Andrew, who has 50% ERS left. QBRJ also loses a bit. He slams into the wall, actually. He's in the wall. And he must have surely got damage off that. Surely, yeah, you can see the understeer now. That was a really violent snap of overset, and it's cost him dearly. And that's such a shame for QBRJ as well, who was running in the points, but now he's going to have to pick for a new front wing. But meanwhile, you see SLR Charlie closing up to the back of Simon and to the back of Alper as well. Charlie's shown really, really good race pace here. And this may well be a, a, a battle here for P4. Alper with 8 seconds of points compared to the two cars behind him who have 3 seconds. And we've also got SLR Jack behind, uh, behind the up, behind the Eastern as well. Sorry, so it's a 4-way battle right now for people. <coughs> I still need to cough. Jesus Christ, I'm very sorry. Um, but, um, but yeah, this is going to be a 4-way battle now. Alper does not have DRS, whereas the other three cars behind him do. And Simon's going to go for a move into turn 1, I think. He's got DRS, he opens it. It's, he puts on the EOS as well, he goes to the outside. Simon running very low on the EOS though. And will Alper send it back up the inside? No he doesn't, he thinks better of it. But can he be overtake Simon and get back up into P4? As we've only got 7 laps left in this race, this race has gone really, really quickly. And I think we're going to see a lot of action towards the end as well, as I said, with this four-way this four battle. Now, Charlie clips the wall, though. You see Charlie clips the wall, goes in sector one, as they follow him from the POV of the SLR Jack. But he's going to go for the move nonetheless on his teammate, Alper. The two Aston Martin go side by side. But Jack also nicks up to the inside of, um, of Alper. Alper loses two places there in one corner. He gets to, he got all out of shape going there through the, lo um, through the long left hand, and he thinks of a move going into the chicane. Um, on SLR Jack, but he thinks better of it. Jack's got a really, really good one on Charlie though. Will he go for a move here? As it seems like Simon has actually broken DRS. Uh, he's broken outside of the one second gap which, um, from Charlie now. So this makes life a lot easier for Simon, especially with how powerful the DRS is at this track. As we see our retirement, QBRJ has retired. And that is a safety car as well. There's a safety car out now. And will anyone, will anyone go into the pits as uh, we see a few penalties actually. Charlie gets a penalty for a collision with Alper. And I'm not sure, I think I saw someone else get a penalty. Yeah, it seems like, 
it seems like Jack's also got a penalty um, in the midst of, of all of that as well. I didn't quite um, see, even though I was on his POV, I didn't quite see what went on there. I, know, I think there was a little bit of contact, and I think he may have got a, contact, uh, a penalty for, for contact under the safety car. I think that may well have been what happened there. But we see um, Charlie in the pits now for front wing change, actually. And Alpha is being forced to stack behind him. So as his team is getting a front wing change in new tyres, Alpha has to sit behind him. But must be about 10 seconds or so between him going back into the... Um, between him having to wait to go into the pit box, him getting into the pit box, and also his, his engineers serving his penalty as well. Oh, this has just gone from bad to worse for Alpha as well. This is such a shame for him. But meanwhile, SLR Quattro has pit. Zakir's Beast has not pit. SLR Quattro is now in a fresh out of soft tyres up against the old mediums of, of Zakir's Beast. And surely Quattro is just going to absolutely blitz past Zakir's Beast at the restart. This is going to be a very intense last few laps here. As we see Simon um, on the soft tyres, we see Quattro on the soft tyres as well. We've also got Jack on the soft tyres. It seems like most cars have actually picked the soft tyres. The only two cars left on the medium tyres are Zach and Feast and Matt Silver. So this could cost them dearly. Both Red Bulls deciding not to pit and was that the wrong decision from them? It's given them track position but at what cost? I've just seen Sam in the chat asking for um, for a summary on the tyres. I've just given you. Um, I've just um, what's the word? I can't speak right now. Um, I've read your mind. I, I, well, I didn't actually read it before before you met. Um, why can't I talk today? The point is, is that I didn't read your message before I put it on, but it's up now, anyways. Forget everything I just said, it just made absolutely no sense. But we now see eventually the two Red Bull cars both pitting. They're going to be forced to double stack as well. And where will they come out? Zach is in P6, Matt is in P8 um, it seems. But yeah, I think that was the wrong decision from, from the two Red Bulls to not turn the lap before. They would have lost much, a lot less time had they, um, had they pit last lap. Especially with that double stack as well for Matt's beast. He's now lost even more time, so he's now down to P8. And he was running in P3 as well before the safety car I believe. So. That is just such a shame for him, and that really, really was not the right decision from the two Red Bull boys. And because of the two Red Bull cars pitting, Quattro uh, re inherit uh, P1 now. And I really would expect him to just, to just blitz away on these fresh soft tyres with the pace that we know he has at this track. Safety car is going to stay out for one more lap, it seems, because the grid still hasn't, the whole of the grid still hasn't caught up to the back of safety car. We can still see uh, the McLaren of that guy on the mini map, you can see on the bottom right, still quite a way away from the rest of the pack. I'm saying that he thinks that Andrew might well just clutch a podium here. He's not been up near the podium positions all race, but as he says, he's now suddenly ended up in a really, really promising position. And who knows, he may well just about um, get a podium here out of nowhere. And for him, I think that would be a really, really good return from this race. 
after because I think he's been running most of the race around P8, P9 actually. I'm just going to take a quick look um, at the penalties as well now. Um, so we can see oh, Quattro is still with no penalties. I wonder, I wonder if he has any warnings even. He surely does, right? He's got, he's got one warning. And to be fair, this track to only have one warning and be that consistent and that quick is no mean feat. So that's extremely impressive from him. And I don't expect him to get a, a penalty for the best of the base either. So, um, so yeah, Quattro with no penalties. We've got Simon in P2, but he's got three seconds. Jack's got eight seconds in P3. Um, or they're saying that I reckon that he may well get um, the five second penalty removed um, after this race by the stewards if he sends that in because it seemed like quite an unfair penalty to be honest. It just seemed like one of those things that happened. But Giotti Andrew has no penalty season P4 and that might also be part of the reason why Sem said that, um, that he may well uh, clutch a podium here. Uh, Charlie's in P5, he's got three seconds. Zach has got three seconds, low in P6, as does Lee in P7. The safety car is going to come in at the end of this lap, and I'll just finish off going through the um, through the um, the penalty before the restart here. Alpe in P9 also has three seconds. He also got caught out uh, by the safety car, and it's cost him dearly. Um, so, oh, sorry, that was from him having to double stack with his, with his teammate SLR Charlie. That's right. But Southampton has got a six seconds of penalty, and that guy has 21 seconds. So unfortunately, I don't think he'll be anywhere. But as we go back aboard with Kocha, who restarts the race, or does he? He's still not restarted. I thought he was, but he hasn't. He now does bowl. He goes. The race is back on the way. This is not the best restart from him, though. Simon is very, very close to the back of him. Simon moves to the inside. Will he go for a move? No. But the Red Bulls are going side by side. The two Red Bulls have collided. The two Red Bulls have collided. Zach and Beast goes for a spin. Oh, that is such a shame. And I just look, I think it might have been three wide there between Matt Silver, Zach and Beast, and possibly um, one of the Aston Martins as well. But that has ended in disaster for Zach and Beast. And Red Bull, who looked so confident and looked like they, like they could have uh, really um, gone much closer to winning the constructors in this race, it's now come back to bite them. Zaki also picks up a penalty after that as well. That is absolute disaster for him. And I think we'll see a few car signs to get desperate now with only three laps to go. And Evan on the same exact tyres. Everyone's definitely trying to make up a few paces and trying to improve their final grid for the, uh, their final finishing position. But we also see Charlie gaining quickly on Andrew, Andrew gaining on, on Jack as well, Jack gaining on Simon, so it's a four-way battle right now for P2. No DRF obviously right now, so this, is, this is the first lap since the safety car restart, but in two laps time we will have DRS, so we'll have uh, DRS for two laps at the end of this race. <laughs> as I still need to cough, I'm... <coughs> I don't know what's happening to me today, I'm very, very sorry. But, um... But yeah, we have... A four-way battle right now for PJ, and we've got Charlie going for a move right now on the outside of GRC Andrew. The podium dream could still be alive for Andrew, though, it's because of the penalties for the cars in front of him. As long as he can stay within uh, three seconds of, P3, of the man in P3, he will have a podium here as it stands. Matt Silver could also gain a few paces here. He could be another big winner uh, from the penalties in front of him, as he's also got no penalties right now. And you can see him lifting off a lot there in order to avoid getting a warning there. So he's, he's definitely very conscious of the fact that he needs to stay without penalties here in order to gain a few pace and maybe get, even get a podium. We can already see the gap that Quattro has pulled out to, to Simon. 2.4 seconds after just a lap and a half on, um, since the restart. As Charlie gets very out of shape in front, Charlie gets very, very out of shape and I can't use the, my left and right triggers. But Charlie got very, very out of shape there coming out of the chicane and was very, very close to the one on the, on the left hand side there. Andrew's got a very good run on him. He's only two tenths of a second behind him right now. I'll make that three tenths. But Matt Silva is only two, two and a half tenths of a second off the back of Andrew himself. So currently only half a second covers P4 to P6. And we've got yellow flags right now as well. There's a car off. It's South Raptor. South Raptor's had a spin. And South Raptor's got no front win as well. But meanwhile, we're going to go back on board with Matt, with Matt Silva right now. He's got a really, really good run here. Still no DRS, but DRS will be activated at the end of this lap. It now is activated. And we have DRS at the start of, 
of the next DLS, um, of the next, uh, sorry, I can't stop, of the next DLS zone. But you see Alper going for a move right now as well, Matt Silver doesn't make it stick, but he's really, really close to the back of him. And this is so close right now. We also see GRT Andrew, oh, GRT Andrew unfortunately picked up a penalty in P5 right now. If he hadn't picked up that penalty, he would have been on for the podium. But unfortunately, it wasn't to be. Can he still get a podium any anyway, though? Things could still happen ahead of him. Simon picks up another penalty, and Peter is now no longer safe for him either. As the gap between him and Charlie in P4 is only about a second and a half right now, maybe two seconds. So he may well drop out of P2 by now as it stands. Matt Silver is also getting, uh, closing up to the back of GRC Andrew. Matt Silver, the only car still in this race who hasn't got any penalties. That's a very, very good effort. Sorry, the only car apart from SLR Quattro in this race who hasn't got any penalties. That's a very, very good effort from him. We see an overtake now for SLR Leah on that guy as well. And we see another overtake. Zach is beast is past um, that guy as well. That guy's had a bit of a mare, but we now see a three-way battle right now. Zach is beast on the left-hand side of Leah. Leah disconnects for a moment. There's a little bit of black going on here. And actually, that guy hits the wall on the right-hand side as well. Did it go for the move? He's going to go for the move. He sends it up the inside. Leah gives him the move just about. It's close between them, but there's another space. Leah hits the wall, though. Leah hits the wall on the right-hand side. Open, they both open the other. That guy's going to have a really, really good run here. We also see a move up ahead. Uh, Matt Silver and Alpha making a move. But there was contact there for a car. I'm not sure who it was. Didn't quite catch a glimpse of who it was. But that guy is now past, uh, past South Actor. And uh, Leah has been overtaken by that guy as well. So was it possibly... No, GLT Andrews out of the base. GLT Andrews retired. And it's GLT, GLT Andrews out of the base. He's, he's in AI mode. He's retired. It also seems like Leah was one of the cars who hit the wall as well. So suddenly everything's kicking off right now with, on the last lap of the race right now. I didn't even realize it was the last lap. Everything just happened so quickly in this race. I just can't wrap my head around everything that's going on. My voice is going, my brain is going, the race is going insane. This has been such a, such a chaotic race. As we see Alpha still battling with Matt Silver right now for, um, for P6. It may not, sorry, for P5, it may not count for much because of Alpha's penalties. But it's going to go for it nonetheless. Alpha gets a really good run through the chicane, Matt Silver doesn't, and Alpha's going to have a run here. He goes to the outside, opens the RS, he's using all of his RS, he's only got 5% left, he's going to need every last little bit that he, that he has left as he comes up to the last corner to finish off the race. SLR Quattro is going to win the race here in dominant fashion, however, uh, and Simon's going to come home uh, in P2, but that won't, I don't think that will be P2 come yet um, after penalties. No, Charlie takes P2. No, Max Silver takes P2, Charlie and P3. Some is demoted from P2 to P4. Gordon Eckberg takes P5. Jack takes P6. Alpha takes P7. Zach is beast in P8 after his spin at the second safety car Vista. SLR Leah finishes, I think, without front wing in P9. That guy finishes in P10. Even though he had loads of penalties, he still manages to pick up a point. And South Baptist, unfortunately, is the only car still on track. He obviously had his spin and and it's just cost him dearly. So he's gonna come home in P11, only six seconds of penalty compared to many more penalties for the car in front of him, but it's not gonna mean anything. He's still gonna come in last. He's not gonna get any points for the Alpines. And that is such a shame for him. However, with the results of this race, I believe that unfortunately, out, um, Aston Martin are now out of the battle for P1 in the Constructors' Championship as they did not, in fact, outscore Red Bull by 31 points, which is what they needed to stay in the hunt. But we see, um, as we take a look right now at the final finishing positions, Quattro takes an absolutely brilliant victory here, finishing ahead by eight seconds, again, sorry, getting an eight second gap to, to the car behind in P2, who was Matt Silver in the Red Bull. In P3 is SLR Charlie, um, and P4 is Simon, who was in P2, obviously, but because of penalties, got demoted all the way down um, down to where he is now. Gold Neckfire, uh, after taking damage and having to change his front wing before the second safety car, recovers to P5. Jack um, finishes in P6, followed, by, followed up by Alpez. Zach is beast in P8 in the, in the other Red Bull car. The championship winner only in P8 after that spin with his own teammate. Uh, SLR Leo is in P9. And uh, rounding up the, the points is that guy in P10. Uh, Southampton is the only other finisher in P11. And obviously we have those who did not finish, 
who were um, Giotti and Drew, who retired late in the race, actually does still qualify because he's completed more than 90% of the race, but obviously does not get any points. QBRJ also retired, as did Hicklin, Dossa, Tez, OG James, and Belangi as well. But I'm now going to try and get those people who were th those top three into a party right now, uh, so we can interview them. And did Red Bull win the championship here? Did they out-qualify the championship rivals by enough points? I don't think they did. Um, well, um, unfortunately, I'm not entirely sure if they got the championship or not. Um, so if someone could let me know in chat, that would be brilliant. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try now and get the three people who finished uh, in the top three into a party now. So just bear with me for a second while I do that. Okay, so those of you who have just joined the party, if you could just make sure you tick your boxes, please, uh, so that we can so that, uh, we can hear you on the stream as well. Um, I'll just give you a, I'll just give you guys a moment to do that. Okay, and uh, hey there, Matt. Um, also, just so you know, if you could just uh, tick your box in the party, in the party, please, so that um, the stream can hear your chat. Um, sorry, your voice as well, please. Okay, I just um, sorry, uh, just. Can the stream check confirm that my audio is okay this time? <laughs> because last time you couldn't <laughs> hear me. Yeah, uh, that, um, yeah, no worries, I just, um, yeah. Um, so if someone could just... Your voice is a bit Sorry? glitchy on the stream. What, my voice? No, or Matt's, Matt's, your voice. Okay, um, is there much we can do about that? I'm not entirely sure. Um, no, yeah, never mind. Uh, Chad, can you guys just let me know? It's alright, no worries. But yeah, chat, can you, if, if there's any problems with the, um, with the audio, can you please just let me know. But, but yeah, I will start off with SLR Charlie, obviously p finishing P3. How was that race for you, mate? Uh, quite surprising, mate, to be fair. Um, surprised I got on the podium. I picked up damage a couple of times throughout that, that race. So, the safety cars kind of saved me both times. As the safety car came out, I got damaged the same lap each time. So it kind of saved me. And obviously, quite a few drivers in front had penalties, which got me the podium. So, quite surprised to be on the podium, but happy at the same time. Yeah, but that's racing, isn't it? And we also saw you have some really, really good battles as well with a few cars. So, how was it to battle with the other drivers on track today? Yeah, it was good. I obviously, I think I was battling with Jack and Andrew. And I, I do trust them both as, obviously, as racers, as I know they are quite clean. So, um, as long as you keep it clean, it's always fun to battle. Hopefully we can get some more in yeah. the future. Absolutely, of course. And it's always great to see that level of respect with other between other drivers in the league. So, yeah, thank you very much, Charlie. And yeah, yeah, congratulations on P3. Cheers, man. Uh, so I'll now move on to Matt Silver, obviously P2. Uh, <clears throat> just lead us through that race, um, um, Matt. Oh, um, first of all, hello everyone. Uh, I'm really happy to get the second place, uh, my second race here in Summit League Racing. Um, the first race I can really do an interview, so yeah, I won my first race. Even more with this one here in Japan, because I have worked my heart here to get the second place. Um, first of all, I mean, props to Quattro or Kevin. Uh, he drove a fantastic race, start to finish qualifying. He was a beast. That was a, a dominant performance by him today. And many, many times he's proven that he was a quicker driver today. Um, well, through this race, let's just start off with um, the first few laps. Got a second place off the start, much like in Australia. And as the race, race progressed, um, there was at one point, I believe, the safety car came out and it's perfect timing. But the thing is, um, I kind of made, made a mistake there. Um, Lazak has been through. Okay, the race was going okay until that point. And then the second safety car comes out. And, well, basically, I come into the pits, of course, to pull the socks. But for some odd reason, um, I, I've set the, the mediums. 
So, uh, well, basically, I spent like two laps literally complaining about everything as I made literally the dumbest choice uh, by not checking the MFT. So that was the thing. I had to pit, come back to P8, but I believe. So it was like, okay, I'm not going to be fighting for second place, but at least I'm going to have some fun here with the fights with everyone in the pack. It was brilliant, great fights with everyone. Shout out to all the drivers here. Uh, but in the end was the fact that I didn't get any penalties that got me here into second place. So uh, we'll finish to track limits and we'll have a really fun race to drive. Uh, yeah, that's it. Absolutely. And as you said, um, not getting penalties at a track like this, you were one of only two drivers actually who didn't get a penalty in this phase, the other driver being Kevin in P1. So that just, um, I mean, at a track like this where it's so, so difficult to stay within the limits, it's really, really impressive that it's first you, know, you managed to stay within the, the limits. It's first happened in Hamilton, <laughs> really. Not any, <laughs> no competition, really. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, also, I just want to go back to the start as well. As you, you mentioned, getting a really, really good start, and we all saw it on the stream as well. You going up from P4 to P2 in one corner, just how, uh, just, I mean, how did that feel? It was obviously such a brave move to go uh, side by side with two other cars into turn one, right at the start of the race. It felt good until I, I almost lost a car like three corners later, but it was fine, it was fine. It's just, uh, you know, when you at the moment, you know, in the zone, it, it's hard because, you don't have really have much time to think, oh my goodness, I just made an overtake. You have to go for, um, think about the next corner. So I didn't really have the, have the time to really think about it and absorb everything that was going on. But how, how, let's be honest, okay? Let's be honest. That overtake into turn one, that, 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 that start, let's be honest, okay? Let's be honest. It, it's just what it is. A great start, the thing is, if, kind of bottled it but i didn't really expect to get kevin anyways you know because kevin i believe he's in the q in division pace um i believe he's almost ready to go to esports to be honest with the pick that he's shown today so but i'm happy the second place and that star was beautiful it absolutely was and thank you very much for speaking to me matt You're and congratulations welcome. on the p2 and finally, we will talk to SLR Quattro or Kevin. First of all, congratulations on the win and congratulations on such a dominant um, just whole race weekend through qualifying, through the race. Just what is about this track that you love so much? I don't really know. I've practiced a lot. That's probably why I was really slow here first, but then uh, Connor teased me a lot. And uh, that's why I became fast here. That's really it. So I had a boring race. P1, <laughs> and then I, uh, yeah, when the second 50 Kong came out, uh, Matt and uh, Zach has beat both one of me, and I thought, why, why are you doing that? So, well, uh, I still got P1, because they did a uh, double pit stop, and it cost them time as well. Yeah, of course, but but still, like, you, you, had, you just had such, I mean, I, I, I just alluded to it, but you had such dominant pace, through, like, through the whole race, so you got... I think you got pole position by seven tenths of a second. Um, you're 1.2 seconds ahead of the next car in Q1, about one second ahead in Q2 as well. And in the race, in the in the after the second safety car restart, you pulled a gap of like of like five or six seconds to Simon in P2 before his penalty <laughs> in just like three or four laps. So it was just an absolutely incredible drive. Yeah. And so uh, the car just uh, just felt good today. It did what I wanted to, so that's why I got no penalties. So I'm really confident on this track. Yeah, absolutely, we can tell. And does that make you conf more confident for the next race as well? Abu Dhabi, yeah, sure. Great stuff. Well, we'll see you then. Thanks so much for talking to me. And as I said, congratulations on such a such an impressive win. But yeah, thank you very much to all of those, all of um, all of you who have tuned into this race today, and absolutely incredible race and obviously we saw a dominant drive from Quattro but we also saw some brilliant battling and some amazing moves um, between other drivers as well. Um, join us next time for the last round I believe of Division 2 which will be at Abu Dhabi next week uh, and yeah thank you very much to those of you who have joined.